What's going on guys? Vic BP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're gonna be checking out the Neo Geo two slot gold edition 32 inch arcade cabinet with active marquee. <laughs> Alright guys, can't lie, it's been a busy couple of weeks. I think it's been three weeks or two weeks since I kind of posted the last video. Um, just been super busy. I got a bunch of hard drives that went out for Wii mods and Wii U mods. I have a couple of ultimate handhelds. That's a big one in the Konami cabinet right now that's going out to E-Rock. That one you're going to see a lot of details on that thing out of this world. I started my four player Hyperspin arcade build. Very unique by King design. You can see it on my shorts. It's just been, it's just, it's been, a, it's been a, a pretty busy weeks. Um, super excited. I do like staying busy. I just feel bad because I didn't shoot much videos. Um, but also, I am getting into the stream game. So I've been doing a lot of late night streams. Uh, I stream basically on my own personal time in New York, which is usually around 1 a.m. So I know I stream late, but there's a lot going on. I'm pretty excited. I'm very active right now. I'm, 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 I'm excited. I'm, I'm doing what I love, and that is arcades, gaming, everything. I'm. I'm in, I'm in a great spot right now, so I'm super excited. But enough of that. On this one today, we are focusing on the totally custom built Neo Geo cabinet that I made with my CNC machine. This is the second cabinet I built with my machine. I have a pretty good feeling now on it. I'll be honest, I am looking already at another CNC machine because the one I currently have, it's hobby grade. It, it does good stuff. It's just the amount of time it's taking and um, I really need a lot more accuracy out of it. Uh, I'm, I'm basically now getting ready for a new CNC machine. It is doing what I need it to do. Um, and again, luckily I only build one cabinet at a time. So it's doing what I need it to do. I just need a little bit more tinkering done with it. But I'm kind of excited because it produced another great, amazing looking cabinet and it works. Like this is on its feet. I don't need to worry about it tipping over. It works, it is solid. I'm excited. So you do see side by side the two cabinets that I've built so far with my CNC machine. You got the Konami Nintendo Switch cabinet. And now, and it's in my collection, is the Neo Geo two slot gold edition. So now this cabinet actually, it's got an interesting backstory to it. I wasn't planning on building a Neo Geo cabinet. The actual next cabinet I was looking to build was a vertical style cabinet, almost duplicating the Pac-Man Galaga home version that I bought from my cousin a while back. Um, I was literally gonna duplicate that. But one day I was cleaning my battle station and I found out in one of my drawers I had these tablets lying around inside of them and I said, you know what? I was, gonna tr I was gonna junk them, these are old tablets. I was like, wait, instead of me junking them, let me try to find out a cool way to incorporate them in an arcade cabinet. And I came up with Neo Geo. I'll talk more about the, the tablets, I'll talk more about that, but it's kind of funny how this kind of started. Um, so again, I had my vision on a vertical cabinet and then it turned into a full-blown Neo Geo cabinet. And I was pretty happy with myself because I was able to basically draw out, or I should say, slice up an existing SketchUp design and then make it modern and compact. So this is pretty cool. I'm gonna go through everything on it. Um, this cabinet is being intended to be sold. I'm, I'm selling this cabinet. I already have it up on Marketplace. I already have two people that want this cabinet. And obviously when it comes to Marketplace, Everybody just breathes hot air until they actually show up with money in hand. That's just part of marketplace. That's what I always deal with all the time. Um, I also do have the Konami cabinet up for sale. This cabinet is for sale. And surprisingly, I did get a hit on this cabinet, but somebody wants a four player Konami cabinet. So there's a lot going on. It's very cool. Again, with the downside with marketplace and people always disappearing and ghosting and not to be, not to mention, you know, the fear of getting scammed. That's why I only take cash. Um, there's a lot going on. I, I like marketplace, but you do get your usual people that just ghost and they get you all hyped and excited for buying a cabinet and then they just disappear. Or in my case, once I mentioned I need a 50% deposit to start artwork or start a build, poof, they're gone. So that's marketplace for you. The Konami cabinet, I will never sell this cabinet because I do stream with this cabinet. If you guys do watch my live streams, thank you for watching. Um, been streaming with the, 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 the ultimate handheld cabinet, loving it. This is awesome. I do have a video coming up talking about the encoders. Somebody did ask me about the encoders. Um, so this one I do have again up for marketplace, but this actual cabinet is not being sold. It basically leads to, Hey, I like your cabinet. And then I tell them, okay, I can make a whole totally custom one with artwork. 
here's your price and all that. Everybody on Marketplace, like this cabinet specifically that I'm getting, one of the people that are interested, they go, I don't like Neo Geo, I don't like the artwork, the artwork is too plain, can you knock off 500 bucks because of the artwork? No, uh, you have to actually pay me f about 400 bucks more to redo the artwork because that's what it costs, you know? So there's a lot to it. That's the hard part about selling arcades, especially custom arcades on Marketplace. People want their own personal build and all the time, 90% of the time, people will always message me and go, hey, I want this cabinet, I love it, but I don't like the artwork, you know, lower the price because I don't like the artwork. And I'm like, no, you have to pay me to reapply artwork. So I don't want to sound cocky, but that's what it is. Again, shout out Justin Golf Boat's decals for printing the artwork when we went to everything. But you know, you got to figure, it, I spend about 200 bucks just for Justin to print. That's not including my time to design and then my time to apply. So there's a lot to it. Let's go back, focus, I'm, I'm kind of jumping, let's focus on the cabinet. So I'm gonna go full in depth. We're gonna go a lot of details on this build, just like all my other builds, but I'm gonna definitely talk about the, you know, the cabinet itself. Notice I do have it on casters. All my builds going forward, they will always be on casters. These, these casters are just amazing. It makes moving easy. I know a lot of people are really here for a lot of details on the marquee. So I'll start with the marquee and then I'll talk about the cabinet design and all that. But before we even just get into that, I'm just gonna close your eyes for a second and just relive childhood real quick. If you ever went into a pizzeria or something like that, you've heard this intro. <laughs> You've heard it. Like, just that intro alone, again, my old business, we had one, we had a Neo Geo cabinet, and again, when I was locking up, closing the lights, you would hear that probably every minute or 45 seconds, however long the attract mode is on these things. Oh, what an iconic sound. <laughs> it's almost as iconic as like the Capcom intro or Sega, it's, it's just an iconic sound, and I'm so happy that I have a dedicated cabinet for it. Now, if you don't know Neo Geo cabinets, there's really, f there's a lot of different styles of Neo Geo cabinets. There was one slot, two slot, three slot, four. There's a mini version. There's a lot. But the biggest thing when it came to a Neo Geo cabinet is that most of them had four slots where there's actually four games in the cabinet. There's a button on the control panel where you could actually select the game before you start. And basically it was almost a multicade. Instead of having one game, it had four games. It was utilizing a cart system, almost like, I don't know, like an NES or a Super NES, that it would just swap between carts and all that. But the biggest iconic thing was the Neo Geo Marquee. Depending on the cabinet that you actually walked up to in the past, they would either have one, two, three, or four games. That would also translate to the marquee being whether it's gonna show one picture, two pictures, three pictures, or four. Most of the pictures that you saw in the Neo Geo cabinet was the instruction card. So it would tell you the game name and then the instruction card to it. So for example, King of Fighters or Metal Slug, it would tell you, you know, hey, the A button is to fire, B button is to jump, C button is for grenade. And basically you had one cabinet that could play multiple games, a lot of games on it. And that's honestly a great feature when it came to, you know, arcade vendors and all that. You had four games for the price of one really. And then again, as far as arcade vendors, they would have to actually swap these little cards, you know, according to the game that it was that was in the cabinet. So the first thing I did, again, I had these two tablets lying around. I'll show you the back on how it is. But these are Amazon Fire tablets, seven inch tablets. And shockingly with seven inch, it's still a good size picture. It looks great. Yes, I'll be honest, it is kind of um, narrow. You know, you could kind of see like the stretch is a little bit now, but you really have to be nitpicky on that. I love how this looks. I think this looks awesome. I'm hoping that you do get a good visual. I know like the, I have to probably fix the highlights on post, but I just love how this looks. This right here is iconic. It, it, I love everything about this specific thing. So like I said, I basically had these two tablets lying around collecting dust. Um, when I was building my house, Fire, uh, Amazon had like a huge sale. I probably paid like 10 bucks per tablet. And originally when I was building my house, I was gonna have a tablet in each room. So, you know, if somebody wants to watch YouTube or whatever. Uh, so I had like five of these. Um, as you can see now, I lost two of them, but I still have a bunch. I even have the big like 12 inch one. I actually use that for streaming so I can see people's comments and all that. 
but I had these lying around. I went to EMU Movies. I am a subscriber or a paid person for EMU Movies ever since I started Hyperspin. And EMU Movies has the actual Neo Geo marquee. It's a very specific name. Let me grab the name of the actual image. So on EMU Movies or MU Movies, uh, there's basically two main files. The main thing you wanna look for, it's called a Neo Geo MVS Marquee Pack Mini. The biggest thing is that it's this mini. Uh, basically they had one option for instruction card and then one option for advertisement. It's pretty cool, again it is a tablet so you could put as much stuff you want on it. I have 140 instruction card images and then I have about 110 um, advertisement images. Yes, I could put the instruction cards also with this, but I kind of like that it's separate. So you do have an you have an advertisement here, and then you have the actual instruction card. Again, this is basically a tablet in slideshow mode. This does not communicate with the Raspberry Pi, or if you do a PC build, you could do active marquee, but you can't really use a tablet. I don't think so. Uh, you might have to get an actual monitor and then split for active marquee. This again is for decoration. Before anybody flames me in the comments and, oh, I want the instruction card to show while I play Metal Slug, it's not gonna do that. This again is purely decoration. There's no intent for it to communicate. You would need more wiring or an event, more, much better tablet to probably get it to sync up. These are cheap tablets. Again, $10 Amazon brand Fire tablets. This is a Fire Tablet 7, so you get what you pay for. The big thing, yes, these are two tablets standalone. I do have plexiglass in front of this, so no, I cannot touch the tablets. Um, so basically, in reality, these tablets, they're right now not powered. I don't have an actual wire to keep it charged, um, only because I don't have that much room here. Um, but so far with my test, I had this on slideshow for 24 seven. I just like left it on overnight. And it, it held up for about two days. I would say two full days. It just kept going. So even though the cabinet was off, and when I went to bed at 3 a.m., these were still cycling. And honestly, for a $10 tablet to have slideshow go for two days straight, that to me is pretty cool. Yes, it is a nuisance. I would have to remove the tablet, charge it, put it back, and then I do have on the back of the tablet, I'll show you, I have a marking where basically I can line it up and all that. Is it? What's the word I wanna use? Is it practical? No, uh, you know, could I put a charging cable here? Yes, I can, but honestly, my, my wire strip down below is full. Possibly if I had like another opening on the wire strip, I would probably do it, but that's extra cost now. I have to get a wire that's gonna go from the base of the cabinet up, then I have to really get two of them or I gotta get a splitter to charge both. For right now, honestly, I, I don't mind taking the tablet off, charging it, and then putting it back on. Daily, like when I stream with this and play with it, no, I'm not gonna look at the marquee, I don't care about it, but when I have like a family function, I definitely will be sure to have the marquee showing. So I'll show you real quick, again, with my cabinets now, the beauty of putting casters on these cabinets is just an amazing thing. I'll take you closer behind and I'll show you how these, ca how these tablets are being held. So honestly, there you have it. Again, those are the Fire tablets. You can see the Amazon logo. It's literally being held by, my microphone is getting away. It's a little block and a screw. That's it. A little jank, but it does work. I had to put the screw here because the tablet would fall backwards if I didn't. I have a block at the bottom. I can't really show you because of the camera, but I do have a block, three quarter inch block. I had to put that block so it would be center with the marquee. I'll go in front again. But basically in this block, there is a notch out that I was hoping that all I needed was to make this notch out to keep the, the, the tablet vertical and up and stay put. It worked, but then the tablet would fall backwards. So I had to add this little screw to it. And you can't really see it because it's a black marker, but I do have a pen mark where basically the tablet would end up with the screw so that I know that the front of the cabinet, it's lined up and such. So now that you see how the tablet's being held, you could almost now see why there's an outline here. You could see this block here, see the block? being covered by the LEDs. That block is holding up the tablet. So you can see the block here holding up the tablet. Not to mention again, the tablet isn't borderless or bezel-less. So you do see the frame outline of the actual tablet. But I mean, you really gotta be nitpicky. Again, I, I love how it looks. I think it looks great. When I turn off the lights, it, it looks awesome. Yes, you do have the little shadows and all that, but it's something that you could deal with. Again, you could see the marquee cut 
I cut the marquee, you know, by hand, and you can see that it's cut, and I cut it basically to the image. So again, I'm gonna pull out the tablets to show you what the tablets look like, but you could see here, I basically just cut out only the display, not the whole frame of the tablet. Do it with you live. I'm gonna take this tablet out. Again, as you can see, quick slide out, and there you go. Look, there's a new Geo cabinet. <laughs> but there you go, that is the tablet there. So just to show you again, you can see, you see the bezel on the tablet, pretty big. It's a pretty big bezel, thin tablet, very nice. You got the charging part, the hardest thing on this tablet, the charging part is on the top, the port. Yes, you could rotate the tablet and it'll spin, um, but the charging port is up top. And that's really why, another reason why I didn't really put a cable here, because as you can see, I'm very close to the top. So imagine like putting a, a charger in, it would have been a nightmare. But that's basically how this tablet works. So again, once the tablet is done, or if it dies, I just plug it in. It takes about like three hours to get a full charge. And then it stays on for two and a half days. So now real quick, I'll show you putting it back. Again, basically I have my block of wood. So it's in a groove here. And then because you can't really see it on camera, I could basically see my line. And now if I go to see it without any cuts, boom, I am lined up. I don't have to worry about it being off to the left or off to the right because of that little Sharpie mark. So now real quick, I'll show you from the front. Again, I can basically pop out the tablet just like that. You can see my hand, hello. And then once I charge the tablet, I just slide it back. And again, I can't see anything, but because of my little Sharpie, boom, I am lined up. Awesome, there you guys have it. The cool thing I do wish or I would like to know, I did mention it, somebody did like repost my video. And I did mention that if you do have the bar top, the MSVX or whatever it is, whatever it's called, I'd be really interested to know if you could fit a tablet in the marquee because that might be a whole different ball game. I mean, again, it's cool, it's aesthetic, it's just for visual, it doesn't communicate with the game. I just think that it's super unique and I love the fact that it's just active marquee, meaning it's motion, it's a slideshow and I think it's just, an, it, it, you just look at it. It's a, it's a big eye catcher and I love it. I think it's a great decorative piece. So now real quick, I'll show you the cabinet in the dark just so you can see how the marquee looks and how the tablets look. Um, again, you could see the shadows. Yes, granted, you could see the shadows. You see the block on the bottom. I had to add that block because my original design was to just have the tablet sit on the base of the, of the cabinet. And in reality, when I did that, the marquee wasn't centered. So I had to add the block to center it up and all that. This is the same dimensions of a real Neo Geo marquee. This is about, um, the print I bought was, I believe it was nine inches. This is nine inches tall right here. Um, so it's, it's very close to, you know, original. And again, I had to add the block just to make sure that the tablets were centered. It looks great. The tablets look awesome in the dark. Again, I was like, oh, you know, I think it's a great idea to run advertisement and instruction card in slideshow mode. I think it's, I think it's very cool. All right, so now I'll talk about the design of the cabin. I got my special guest here, my baby daughter, because dad life. Uh, I got to bang out these videos and she's actually going to show up on one of the pinball videos I have coming up where we're going to do dad mode, where basically as you can see, I want to be able to play pinball, but we're going to have to play one hand because I'm holding her. Um, but again, the design of the Neo Geo cabinet, this is of exact replica dimensions of a Neo, I shouldn't say yeah. exact dimensions, um, but the outline of, of the Neo Geo cabinet is exact to the original, but I made it more modern, I made it more compact. I'll show you real quick a little snippet or a picture of an actual Neo Geo cabinet. And you could see like the size of this cabinet, especially the back. You see that back hump? It is huge, it's, it's, it's big. Again, I remember, when I had the Neo Geo cabinet at, at the business, I, there was a very big red machine. Um, so basically again, shout out to Gozer or Dozer. He basically made a bunch of SketchUp files and have exact dimensions of RK cabinets. And he actually has several Neo Geo cabinets. He had one slot, two slot, three slot, four slot. He had the mini. He had like this very unique, like it, it was a small screen, but a big marquee. Basically I took this one that you see up top and I basically cut the back. Again, I'm building cabinets. 
I have to be cost effective. I could build that exact Neo Geo cabinet you see there, but it's gonna take an extra one or two four by eight sheets uh, to build that exact dimension. I think the depth on that cabinet you see above, it's like, I think it's like 35 or 40 inches deep. Um, it's a big cabinet, it's, it's a monster cabinet. So my idea again when I'm building modern cabinets is that I needed to make sure it's compact and it fits through doorways. Like I said in my past videos, I'm gonna be too repetitive with it. So basically I downloaded the SketchUp file. I only took the side panel. That's all I really need is a side panel. And then I slice and dice. You can see here like the top of the marquee here. This is exact how Neo Geo was. Kind of like this little indent, this little straight piece down and the angle of the control panel. That's exact. Um, even the height on this, this is exactly the same height. Granted, it's up about two inches because of the caster wheels, but it is comfortable. I like how the control panel is. I like where it is. It's not too high, it's not too low. It's a perfect height. So again, shout out to Gozer for loading up the SketchUp file and then I slice and dice it. So on uh, somebody on the RK 1UP forums, or I should say the Facebook page, was looking to get a custom um, what was the game? Gauntlet Legends. But he wanted a three-quarter scale and I looked it up and I found Gauntlet Legends. I gave him a price, he didn't get back to me yet. But it's kind of cool that somebody went, made SketchUp files for it and then I could basically replica, replicate any cabinet with his file. So shout out again to Gozer uh, for all the uploads. He has everything. You're looking at Pac-Man, you want a Donkey Kong, you want the Nintendo style of cabinet. He's got all that down packed. So now once I figured out, yes, I'm gonna do a Neo Geo cabinet, it came to the artwork and I saw on the promo video, I think his name was Todd. A couple of people watched the live stream on me making the artwork for it. So shout out to you guys watching. We got Eric, I know Bobby. Um, I got Goofy was on it. There was a lot of people involved on just watching the stream. And the biggest thing was that when I was making the artwork for Neo Geo, everybody knows Neo Geo is the iconic red cabinet. I didn't really wanna do that though, meaning I wanted the right cabinet, but it was like too red and it was too basic, it was too kind of, I don't wanna say the word plain because it is an iconic cabinet, but basically I just added uh, four images to the sides. The side panels are, again, iconic panels because of the big red, um, but I did wanna add artwork a little bit because again, this is gonna be resold. So I have the King of Fighters down below, I have the Samurai Showdown, and then on the right side here I have Puzzle Bobble and Metal Slug. But the coolest thing again with the CNC, the file that I have, the DXF file, I'm able to upload it to Photoshop and then I'm able to exactly get all the logos and everything that I need in its right area. This is like the coolest part. I'll go into the control panel because that honestly was a scary thing for me. Let's talk about the control panel. So as you can see the control panel, if you've ever come across a real Neo Geo cabinet, it has the iconic four buttons with like the black outline, it, it, it's, it's iconic. The biggest thing again for me, I said to myself, I said, you know what, for me to officially test out if I could get the button layouts and the cutouts for the artwork, I'm gonna try it out on Neo Geo. And as you can see, I think it, I think it did a pretty good job. Um, I personally, I, like, I would have to make these type of outlines, kind of like these big shadows. I wouldn't really look into getting like, if I had to do an actual circle outline, it's kind of too risky. It's a little bit too risky. I wouldn't do that. But luckily with the file, it, it looks pretty good. I think it came out pretty good. Now again, iconic Neo Geo. Normally there was like a, a, a game select here. There was an LCD screen here, but the biggest thing is that you have the left player start, the right player start, and it had like just this black outline. It, again, I, I try to replicate it to the T for a real Neo Geo cabinet. I mean, even down to like the kick plate. Again, really there should be a coin door here. That's why the left and the right player is here. Again, this is how Neo Geo cabinets are. There's really a coin door here. So it's like left player coin, right player coin. I didn't need a coin door, not to mention the price of these coin doors and the availability of these coin doors now. They are ridiculous. But there's the kick plate. I think it looks great. Neo Geo logos, the red, the white. It's, it's, I love how this came out. This came out awesome. We're gonna talk real quick about the top, the speaker panel, again, awesome. This time, instead of me doing the circles like I did with the Konami cabinet, I did the three lines like Game Room Solutions. It's pretty good, I think it, I think it looks cool, and as you can see, the key thing about measuring and the CNC file, I was able to line up the Neo Geo logo dead in the middle 
without worrying about it getting cut and all that. So it's pretty cool. I'm not sure which exact design I like, whether I like the circle design, like a speaker grill, or if I like this kind of slotted design. But the coolest thing again is the vinyl on the speaker panel. I'm loving it. I love doing these. I think it, it just adds visual to it. I've seen other builders do it like Sharkade. Um, they, 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 they look awesome. I, I think it looks great. Real quick, I'm gonna mention the marquee on this. I'm trying to stay away from the company, but it draws me back. The marquee, yes, is from Game Room Solutions. Um, I'll be honest, Game Room Solutions and their marquee, I like their marquee. I've always used it for years, obviously. When it came to the marquee for the Konami cabinet, I used Angel, great guy, awesome stuff. It's just for me, I'm used to like the marquee being like translated. It's a special paper. It's not like a regular paper. And unfortunately the Konami cabinet was kind of like that. It still, it shows through, but I didn't, I couldn't risk it. I said, you know what? Game Room Solutions does offer their marquee print. It's 50 bucks, but their max they could do is like 32 inches. This right here is clocking in at, you wanna play? <laughs> this right here is clocking in at 31.5 inches wide by I believe it's nine inches tall. Um, so yes, it is a Game Room Solutions marquee. As of right now, they're the only person that makes a good quality marquee. I like the paper they use. That's the biggest thing I'm trying to get at is the paper they use. If I close the lights, it's just, you can see it. Like this is right. The, it, the translate, it pushes through. It looks correct. Again, it's the, it's the paper that they use that drew me to them. And then not to mention for the price, it was 50 bucks, free shipping. And it took about maybe four days to get to me. So I had to do it. I'll show you real quick. So again, I had to cut out. I cut out the squares to get the tablets in. And as you can see, this is the trans light here. Look at the back of it. And I'm putting it in the dark so you can see, you can see my finger shadow here. That's, that's, that's Ava touching the camera. <laughs> that's like the big thing about this trans light is again, it's, it's this paper that really makes it good. And when you put it in front of LEDs, it's just correct. It looks good. So now you guys won't believe this, but this, this cabinet was a little bit of not a headache, uh, not a challenge, but this cabinet should have been done in two weeks. It actually took like four weeks to complete and you won't believe the reason why. Um, again, cut usually from cut to waiting for vinyl artwork. It usually takes about two to three weeks tops for a complete build, especially a Raspberry Pi build. The reason why this one got delayed was because of the buttons. I couldn't believe it. I'll, I'll give you the background to it, but I'll tell you real quick why I dubbed this the gold edition. Um, so again, Gozer has his Neo Geo designs and one of his designs was labeled gold edition or gold slot. And I was like, oh, gold, that sounds cool. I, I've never done a gold team molding build, number one. So I was like, this is perfect. I'm gonna dub it the gold edition. Um, while I was looking at gold team molding, I came across gold trim buttons. And I was like, oh crap, this is gonna be awesome. It's gonna be the gold edition. Gold team molding, gold trim buttons. We gotta dub it the gold edition, right? So sure enough, I let, um, what's the wording I wanna use? Um, I tried to save a penny and it cost me a dollar. That's, I don't know if that's a legit quote. I kind of just threw it up, you know, whatever. But looking for these gold trim buttons, there was one company really that had it and that was Paradise Arcade. Of course me, I do some Google searches and all that. I come across the same exact button on eBay, China eBay. And what do I do? I went with China eBay. Usually like stuff that I get from eBay, especially China eBay, it takes like max like a, a week. I don't know what the hell happened, but I bought the buttons from China eBay. It took like two weeks. Not to mention it took like five days just for them to ship it out, like to actually process the shipping label. And you won't believe it. I waited two weeks. I get it in the mail. I was so excited. You could have asked my wife, you could ask Ava. I was waiting every day for these buttons to come in. I get the box in my hand. I'm so excited because I'm like, yes. And this is like the third weekend. I'm like, yes, I just did the artwork. Awesome. Like, you know, we can finally complete this build. I open the box. China eBay sends me chrome trim buttons. You should have seen my face. I was cursing up a storm. It was a Saturday. 
I was so excited because I knew it was coming because of the tracking. I was like, yes, I'm gonna complete this. And it like, it just, it, it was like an uppercut from nowhere. I was so upset. That Saturday was the worst. I got so fed up. I messaged the guy on eBay. I, you know, the guy on eBay is like, listen, you keep the buttons, but we'll give you half your money back. And I was like, I don't want half my money back. I need gold trim buttons. I didn't order Chrome. Luckily they sent me, they, they, they gave me the full payment. They, they refunded everything. Now I had a place in order to Paradise Arcade. And the buttons honestly from Paradise Arcade, sorry. The buttons from Paradise Arcade were about 250 a button. This right here is a 22 button layout control panel. Times that by like 250, you do the math. On eBay, I paid 30 bucks. And I'm like, no brainer, right? Sure enough though, it delayed me three weeks. Um, so again, that was an example of save a penny and I lost a dollar. If this was a customer's bill, I, I would have had to give it a discount because of the time delay on it. Uh, but I was just so heartbroken. I got these chrome buttons. Speaking of the buttons now still, this actual control panel layout, the colors you see on this are not the way I wanted. I didn't want these. <laughs> I didn't want this color layout. I didn't want, I didn't want this color layout. I'll bring you in closer again to show you my main design. So now if you look up a Neo Geo control panel, I should flash it on the screen. You can see the iconic four buttons are red, yellow, green, and blue. Um, that's iconic. The main thing, yes, I wanted those four, but obviously I'm using LED buttons. It definitely would have looked way better if I used the regular concave, you know, hat buttons, but you lose LEDs and you lose the chrome trim. So I had to do LED for the chrome trim. The main thing was that I wanted white buttons here on the bottom. These bottom three were supposed to be white. Sadly, Paradise Arcade does not have gold trim white buttons. So I just had to come up with this design. So as you can see, I have red here, I have blue here. And again, the LED that Paradise Arcade supplied, it's a yellow LED, but you can see this turned like orange. This right here is a white LED I have here. That's actually yellow. So I will be swapping these out with white LEDs instead of the yellow. Now, I took actually the China buttons that I had and I said, oh, you know what? I have these white, caps from the China buttons. Let me just take out this and put the white in. And unfortunately it didn't work. The, um, the trim, the trim on this is smaller than your standard chrome trim. So the button here, it, it was, it was, it was too small. It wouldn't fit. And I was like, oh man, I thought maybe I could get away with it with the China buttons, but it didn't. So again, the color scheme honestly was not exactly how I wanted it. Um, you do notice the chrome in person. You probably don't see it that well on camera, but you do notice it in person very well. And for this, because I had them lying around and I had to do it, I do have the IL joysticks eight way. I love how these look. This is like iconic look. It looks beautiful. Not to mention, it's just a beautiful joystick. It plays really good. So now real quick, because of my OCD, I had to change it real quick. I now have four white LED buttons right here. And then I left the two orange uh, yellow LEDs there. I think it looks great. I'll turn off the light and now it looks proper It definitely looks you can see the difference between this and this so again yellow LED versus white um, Now it looks good. Honestly, I wish I didn't take the official pictures until I change this I might have to take new pictures, but this now looks correct. This looks awesome All right, so real quick to end it. I'll show you guys the system itself uh, basically, again, I always like to do it where it's a one flip on and everything turns on. Monitor the Raspberry Pi and all that. So this is running a Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. It does play 15,000 games, but I basically have this set to launch into Neo Geo Collection. So this does play your Street Fighter, NBA Jam, um, NES, SNES, 15,000 games, but I do have it set to launch on Neo Geo. Me personally, while it's here in my man cave, I leave it on the Neo Geo collection. So there is a collections wheel strictly for Neo Geo arcade games. Now it's kind of cool when I was configuring it, the biggest thing I wanted was that I wanted the top four buttons to work for Neo Geo. I wanted A, B, C, and D. If you've ever done builds or if you ever, you know, attempted another Raspberry Pi build, most of them take a six button layout and they change the D. So as you can see right now, it launched into Neo Geo. I'm in the Neo Geo collection, so I am right now showing off all Neo Geos. 
After 30 seconds, it enters a track mode showing all Neo Geo games. Going back to the buttons again, if you ever you know played around with emulation, as far as Neo Geo, it's really like the A button is button four. That is the bottom row, the first button. I didn't want that. Basically, I have every game, there's 135 Neo Geo games, all 135 are utilizing the top four buttons. That was the biggest thing I wanted. I didn't want the A on the bottom row and then B as button one, C as button two, like how it normally is. I didn't do that for this build. Basically, all four buttons up top are utilized in Neo Geo. The real big thing, button four, this blue button all the way to the top right, is really button four. So there's basically a jumper wire going from the bottom row first button to button four. And as you can see, we have a track mode. I got my volume controller right underneath the deck, beautifully. And that's it, it is showing off all Neo Geo games. I, I love it. This is right now how I, I leave it on at night. I leave it just like this. It's gonna cycle through all Neo Geo games. It's awesome. You wake it up, it's got a nice Neo Geo background. You got the game titles on the side. You got the preview on the left. I think it's awesome, I think it looks great. And now the last thing to comment about this and my other builds and honestly all future builds, I am now doing this feature I'm calling streaming. It's a stream feature. Basically it's a HDMI splitter in the back, it's a powered HDMI splitter that basically is one in, two out. And just like my Konami cabinet where I stream the Switch games, the handheld games on it, I'm basically able to take this cabinet, play here but broadcast out to a capture card. So it's pretty cool. It's a simple thing. You're looking at maybe 30 or 40 bucks. Uh, again, it's just an HDMI splitter and two HDMI cables to do a streaming feature. I would probably charge a little bit more if somebody wants a decorative plate. If you did see my Konami cabinet, um, I basically just have a notch out with two wires sticking out. But I could make it nicer, meaning I could get like a wall plate HDMI and a wall plate ethernet, at least for the Konami cabinet. Um, but for right now, it's just a cable and a, um, what's the word? A extender, like a, a, it's a female to female. And that's it, so I'm able to stream with this now. And I think it's cool. There you guys have it, that is it, the Neo Geo two slot gold edition. I got my Neo Geo, that's it. Yeah, you wanna play? Let's go. Ha, <laughs>